Hello and welcome. I'm your host, TNT, Tara Nicole Tarver, and you are watching Supernatural Lifeline Revelation Encounters. We are having our second discussion, and we are back with this awesome panel. And I would love for you guys to make sure you are going to, as soon as this is over, get your tickets and get connected with this platform for purpose that Lena Anthony and her husband Todd have put together. We are having a wake-up call for men, and this is going to be an amazing opportunity on the 3rd of March. Real quickly, we're going to cut real quickly to this video. I want you to take a quick look at what the men are going to be doing at this platform form for purpose empowerment wake up call I'm so excited about this man's wake up call finally a forum where men could come and ask all of the questions that they never had the answers to mm. think about it we have fathers who are authors but they're not finishers mm. simply because they don't see the seed the child all the way through right and as a result of that a lot of times we've seen Little boys grow up without a father and they become grown boys and they've never seen the image so they don't even know how to operate. And, and, and simply one of the biggest misconceptions uh, is just because a father is in the home it doesn't mean that you're being fathered. Mm, if true. this father doesn't know what it means to be a father then you have an abandoned child with a father present. Right. So the mission of the Men's Wake Up Call is to restore the image and identify the power and the purpose as a leader and a father here on earth. Please come out and let's have an honest conversation on what it means to be a father. We've been having this honest conversation and this has been not only a wake up call, but it's been a celebration of love. Mm -hmm. It's truly an amazing opportunity to be loved by a father and have a father figure in our life. And if you missed our first show, you definitely want to go back and check it out because we've had a great opportunity to talk with my amazing panel. Now, let, I would love for you, Miss Lena Anthony, who we, she's an actor, producer, author, wife, mother, woman of God, and she has so much vision, and I'm telling you, you will be seeing her face all over the place because yeah. she is destined for greatness. Yeah. Can you please introduce the panel and those who aren't here because you even have yeah. some amazing people that are going to be on panel mm -hmm. and why, why people want to get connected with this movement, and I call it a movement because it, movement. it will be continuing on, and we're starting something here, and we're awakening our communities, our homes, our, yeah. our country yeah. to something that's going on. Absolutely. Thank you. Platform for Purpose is a uh, movement, but I'm just going to introduce our, our panel. It's Van Brown. Um, we have author, poet, and speaker, and Todd Anthony. He's an actor, producer, and um, speaker as well. And I'm going to let them talk about what they're going, to, what, what we want to present for okay. them at the Men's Wake Up Call. And we also have uh, Prophet Lovi Longoba. Yes, we have Prophet Lovi Longoba um, from RCJC Ministries, and we also we have Will Catlett, who actor um, from Love Is, and um, we have a special guest for you guys as well. Ooh. So, yeah, you got to sign up March okay. 3rd, go to the Eventbrite. And I got my ticket immediately. <laughs> I, I hope I was the first person to get a ticket because I saw it online and I grabbed it really Thank quickly. You. I'm actually catching a flight back from Cincinnati yes. just to get there yes. because yes. my daughter has a yes. senior thing going on and I was like, wait a minute, I already got a ticket to something. Yeah. I, need to, I need to get back for this. So I'm really looking <laughs> forward to it because I came to one of your discussions last yeah. year. Um, go ahead, brothers. Let's let's talk about this let, and let's let Lolita Lita introduce herself. Hey, uh, Lolita. The, uh, the financial guru. <laughs> did you see what he just did? Do you see that's what we're talking about? Father, love, <laughs> husband. This is what we're talking about. The love presents. This is his beautiful fiance. Hi. Lita. Hi. Hi, Hi Lita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Help me. Yes. <laughs> no, but this this topic is so important simply mm -hmm. because I had a great father growing up, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things he didn't know. He mm -hmm. taught me how to protect, to provide, but the mental and the stimulation part he was lacking because his father never gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I went out into the world on 50%. Mm. I knew how to protect and provide, but I didn't know how to ment mentally stimulate, mm. meaning what am I was supposed to teach my significant other? Mm. And because of that lack, I got all of the criticism. Oh, you weren't, you, you have no vision, you don't, you're not affectionate, you're not this, you're not that. 
And so I suffered in a lot of relationships mm -hmm. simply because I just didn't know. And it's not his fault. Once you become a man, you have to literally seek out the things that you're missing mm -hmm. and then give it to yourself. How does a man, and maybe Todd, both of you guys, anybody jump in, how does a man discover, because sometimes it's hard to look mm -hmm. inward, you know, they say that the frontal lobe of a brain doesn't develop to about 25 anyway, so, mm -hmm. and men, they say, are just a little bit slower than women, <laughs> slight, I mean, no, no, not, not a slot, but just, yeah. just yeah. scientifically speaking, mm -hmm. and so, how does a man begin to discover, like, I'm missing this, and then what's the process for a man uh, to begin to actually implement and go find that? Because I, I get, hear too many people saying, well, I wasn't taught that, or I, right. I've never been a father. I said, yeah. nobody's ever been a father before. Right. They all get the right. same opportunity. Right. So, like, let's make the best of this. So what yeah. do you see? What, what do you see? How do they look too. inward? I think um, one thing is extremely important. Um, every man should have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I think to understand that relationship between man and God, you can understand who you are as a man. Absolutely. Yeah. Because... We are representatives of God. Even when you look at the breakdown of the family, it's husband, wife, child. Yes. But we're an extension of him first. Mm -hmm. So when you think about who God is, he's a provider. He's a caregiver. Mm -hmm. He has vision. Mm -hmm. um, and when you think about those Ooh. things as a man, you say, okay, I'm a provider. Mm -hmm. I'm a caregiver. I have vision. Mm -hmm. And we're an extension of the church when it says husband, God, we're the church. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you look at husband physically, wife is the represent, representation of the church. Mm -hmm. Meaning when mm -hmm. we have a vision, now the church helps us carry out the vision. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just like God has a vision, mm -hmm. but we as his children help him carry out the vision. Mm -hmm. Could he do it himself? Absolutely. But that's the reason why he put us here to even help him carry out right. his overall vision. Yes. But yeah. also, okay. just to make it Plainly, mm -hmm. I think men can understand who they are by t two simple ways. You have passion and you have purpose. A lot of times they say, well, how can I figure out what my purpose is? I think once you figure out what you're passionate about first, mm -hmm. that can help you support what your passion is. It's yes. just like, um, you know, I use myself in, as an example. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a people person. I know, like, I love to help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also, passion is my acting. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use my acting as a platform to reach people. So now I can use my purpose to reach people. Right. So mm -hmm. it goes hand in hand. Yes. Right. If that, if that makes sense. Absolutely. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. Uh, I, because I see a lot of people, and men in particular, they're saying, you know, oh, I, I want to be an artist. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or I want to be, uh, uh, I want to do music. Mm -hmm. And they are so wrapped up in that that mm -hmm. they're forgetting to provide in the process. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to, like, T.D. Jakes, and he was saying that he literally would go to work all day and then come home and work on his vision at night, him and his wife. Mm -hmm. And his wife is sleeping on the pews, and she's pregnant because they're building this church and they're right. building something until that can actually take over yeah. and fund everything else. Right, he right. stayed with it. But I see people wanting to quit and men not understanding the balance of finding it together and learning the things, the skills you need to learn out in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, I know that we're going to talk about some of those things at Platform mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. Purpose. Our, um, I always keep, I, I want to forget to say our, cel our celebration of love <laughs> yes. at this men's yes. wake up because love is everything. Love yeah. covers, love yeah. conquers, and yeah. love's going to mm -hmm. fix everything, yes. and it always comes back to love. With that, what can be expected for everyone that attends this wake-up call? Well, one of the things is this is the conversation that we didn't get to have yeah. growing up, meaning... Anytime you intentionally, that's why I love so much about what Lena and Todd has done, when you intentionally bring people together for the purpose of elevating and enlightening and, and enhancing together, we can't do nothing but be successful because the goal came from love. We first have to get back to what is the definition of love. Yeah. We don't, love is the most misunderstood word in the world, in my opinion, mm -hmm. simply because we say we love someone, but love 
if you look it up in a dictionary, let's just go right to it. You look it up in a dictionary, it says, love is an intense feeling or passion towards something or someone. Yeah. Now, say that again. Love is an intense feeling or passion towards something or someone. Mm -hmm. So just by definition, if I'm married and you're telling me that love is an intense feeling, the minute I don't feel like loving her no more, that's grounds for me to leave. Wow. We have to find out what did love mean at its truest origin. It simply means love is saying, I am committed to loving you for the rest of my life, anticipating your needs and meeting them, expecting nothing. Love is a gift gesture. It has nothing to do with what you're going to receive back. I am so full that my cup overflows. But if my cup, the reason why love is so distorted, because their cup was never full from the very yeah. beginning. Wow. So they come to the other person disguised as love, but it's simply, I simply just want to get to you so you could give me something back. And the second I don't get back right. this, then... I'm going to go find someone else that gives me that right. arrows, that right. feeling again. Right. That I need to have that feeling. So they're chasing right. this thing instead of having commitment. Is so it's saying. a consumer relationship versus being a covenant one. God, there's nowhere in the Bible where God says why he loves us. Nowhere. I've wow. asked pastors. I've read it. I've had comments. So if there's not a reason on why he loves us, then why are we putting reasons on we could have reasons on why we like someone, mm -hmm. but the goal is when you're dating for the first time is are you healthy enough to receive my love? Mm -hmm. That's it. Are you healthy enough? Because I don't want to give my love on an unfertile territory. Mm -hmm. Are you healthy enough to understand what I'm giving? Mm -hmm. This is really, uh, this leads me into my, my next question because so many Young men are running from love. We had a generation that even in music, if you look at music in the 70s and 80s, it was like, you know, uh, you know, love will make you come home early and, right. you know, keep you from staying out all night long, you know. <laughs> and it was like, you know, they were looking for this relationship. Everything was, you know, even groups, they danced together and yeah. all I do is think of you and day and night and, right. and, you know, all these songs, right, you know. Right. But then you get into the 90s, and it's, we don't love those hoes. Right. And, 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 and it's a change. And now they're, they're the B words, and they're different, right. th these words. And it's trained a whole generation right. yeah. to look at women differently. Well, think about it. The, even the R&B songs, even the, the, the soul music mm -hmm. also, if you listen very carefully, media is the most powerful entity on earth. Media comes from the word medium. It simply means to stand between. Mm. So it means I'm standing between uh, mm -hmm. something, the soul. And anyway, that's another story. Right, right. But, I hear so you. So <laughs> R&B music is saying, if you look at all of the, the essence of R&B music and soul music, say, the majority of it is saying, if you leave me, I'll go crazy. You think of all the songs. It always talks about someone leaving and you either having a mental breakdown or you complete me, if, 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 if you leave me now, you take away the deepest part of me. All of these songs speak of when you leave, I'm going to have a deficiency, but that's not correct, mm. according to the word love. Yes. And so we've been misguided from the very beginning. Because yeah. listen to me, this is the reason why there are so many men and women in mental institutions. Mm -hmm. There's so many men and women that can function because you've already told me, whatever you listen to consciously becomes mm -hmm. your teacher. Mm -hmm. right. So if all of my music and all of the movies I'm watching are constantly telling me, if you leave, you are the sunshine of my life, and if you leave, I'll go crazy, then that's what we're going to do. Mm. What happens if uh, James Singer, who just passed away, he said, he sang a song that was so beautiful. Uh, there's a line in the song that says, how do you love someone and not lose your way. Uh -huh. How do you love someone and not lose? It simply means my identity is wrapped up in God at the root. Yeah. So when I come to give, yeah. I'm giving because I'm so filled up. Beautiful. And if you decide to leave, I still have my light. Yes. But the problem is we've traded in God's light for this individual. Mm. And we cannot build things 
on things that can be break breakable. What do you think? Well, I, I see, I see your wheels turning, Lena. No, no. One the lady save there it for, for uh, the, the event. Save it for the event. <laughs> <laughs> kind of talks that you can expect these great, rich talks because it needs to be spoken of. Yeah. Right. Now I think of that with men that are coming out of prison, who their identity is being stripped and pulled right. away, yes. and and then they're told that they're less than, and they're right. they're fighting from a deficit, or right. they they've grown up in just the these organized ghettos, areas, neighborhoods, or, or what have you, is telling them what they can't. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're fighting their way mm -hmm. to find an identity in themselves. Mm -hmm. So with that said, these young men that don't know what love is, or, yeah. or, or learn love from their gangs, or or, mm -hmm. um, or, or even, uh, and I say like, you know, the Italian gangs, and, and Latino gangs, and, and, and African American gangs, yes. and no one is there showing them what real love is, and so how do they, these men coming to the knowledge of love, it has to be through the father. Right. It's got to be. And did you find that once you got married that like, mm -hmm. cause I, I mean, just as myself as a woman, I've learned by the Lord how to relate to another person. Yeah. Right. I've learned how to be in a relationship, the ship is moving, it's yeah. moving, it's, right. it's in motion, yeah. right. and I've learned how to bridge the gap, and a kind word turns away wrath, and yeah. that's not yes. naturally taught, so people right. fight against it. Yeah. You kill my cat, I kill your dog. Right. You know, <laughs> you know, and, and learning that my love can cover, and it's not a weakness, it's actually that's a strength. Right. So, yeah. you know, just speak to that a little bit, especially, like, you know, mm -hmm. on how that can be developed once you come to Christ and, and what begins to happen in a man yeah. where he really, I, he connects with his creators and then finds out exactly who he is. Right. I, mean, I think going back to what you said, it's important for a man to see love from a man. A lot of times yeah, we're taught true. automatically as a boy you got to be hard. You mm, can't cry. Right. You get a, you, you fall, you, uh, don't cry. Right. Mm. And that's actually the opposite. Now, yeah. obviously, we want you to be tough and be a protector. Mm -hmm. However, if you don't cry, if you don't have emotions, mm. how will you even know how to connect to a woman? Yeah. Because right. mm. if, I, if, I, if, if I'm scared of showing my emotions or being affectionate, right. and I've never been taught that, there's already going to be a disconnect here. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, now, I love that you said this because a friend of mine who spent, um, I, my girlfriend, she does uh, uh, chaplain ministry a lot, and mm -hmm. she always has me come, but a friend of mine had been to prison for eight years and grew up in a very rough rural area in Chicago and uh, was really disturbed, and I actually came and gave a hug, mm -hmm. and he said, this is making me feel very funny. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I said, explain to me, I want you to talk me through that feeling. And it was like it, weakness, everything that was, seemed strong was weak to him. Right. Wow. And he didn't understand and has the hardest time giving and receiving love because right. they're walled in to this false image and identity. Well, society has taught, TV yes. has taught us. Programming. Uh, society, yes, it has <laughs> taught us that the man, even when, when you see images like Popeye, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> growing up, he was the strongest one. When he ate spinach, he was the strongest one. He was never weak. Mm. Right. But... In weakness is strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when we cry, there's strength and it's a release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You know, even even in weakness, God can reach us at at, at those moments. Yes. A lot of times when we're strong and we think we have it all together, well, why do we need God right. at that point? Right. If there's no weakness, right. then why is there a need for God? Van, do you feel that men, why do you feel men don't talk as much and keep mm -hmm. hold things in? Yeah, ego. Yeah. Ego, ego, ego is killing us yeah. simply because men... Uh, wired to be teachers. Right. We're wired to be teachers, but the problem is we don't have the information because no one <laughs> taught us. <laughs> and so we will pretend like we know. We will literally experiment. So that's why <laughs> men make emotional decisions. We think men are not emotional, but they are extremely emotional in the sense of what they do may look masculine, right. like selling drugs. We think that's a masculine tough thing. That's actually an emotional decision because it's not based in intelligence. Mm -hmm. Anything that's not based in intelligence and wisdom is an emotional decision. So that's why we have failed our men because once we get wisdom, mm -hmm. we owe it to ourselves. Our form of love or fatherhood is to go into the hearts because yeah. they're not going to come and ask 
they're going to actually, we have to go and interrupt their yeah. patterns. Mm -hmm. There are certain teachers that literally interrupt my pattern, people like Dr. Miles and Papa Lovi. Yeah. They literally interrupt my pattern because I thought I had it all together. You thought it was functional, but it right. was dysfunctional. Yeah. Oh, how dare you criticize you me? Enough right. to come you know, and here stay. I am, bring providing and doing all these great things, and you're criticizing. No, but see, ego. Mm. The minute I turned off that ego string and mm. I allow vulnerability, and, humility. And, so you first have to acknowledge that I don't know it all, mm. and we have to go to them. So are you talking about mentor? So mentorship, in, which is probably yeah, going to get talked important. about heavily yeah, at, yeah. at, at, at right. you know, the men's wake up call. That we go all around the world yeah. uh, giving resources and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's mainly to stimulate the chat, the, the woman, the, the little woman and the male. Mm -hmm. The goal is to stimulate their minds to get them to dream again. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dreaming and vision. Right. I've had people, more men say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Now, I heard, you know, Todd say, they have to find out what they're really good at and right. what drives them. But some of them can't, are not finding that right. drive, and they don't know what their next thing they're going to do. They've been going to a job. Right. They're, it, 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 if anybody saw Mr. Incredible, uh, I have to watch kids' movies all the time. He's <laughs> going to and fro the job. He is just bored, and he wants to be a superhero again, right. you know, and he puts himself in a terrible situation to become that again, you right. know, and his wife yeah. <laughs> the, the, has to come to rescue him. But, yeah. but the point is, I was saying, like, how, do young, how does a man that is a man mm -hmm. that has not had vision gets this wake up, I don't have it together, where... Is he going to go to discover his vision? And now, See, please talk to that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I didn't even know at my early 20s, I didn't even know what vision was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I had the most devastating mm -hmm. pain in my life mm -hmm. from the loss of the father and then the loss of a relationship mm -hmm. that I held on to as my crutch. Mm -hmm. In those moments is where your purpose is activated mm -hmm. because I understood that crisis, whatever keeps you up at night means that you have the solution to solve it. Ah, that's so great. So I didn't like the, the, the dysfunction. I didn't like the miscommunication. I didn't like the way we treated each other, man, woman, father, son. Right. All of a sudden I found myself reading books because I wanted to understand why I failed. Mm. All of these books, what I thought was just trying to heal me, now I'm here sitting to you talking about it. Right. And I have a friend who was actually molested by his father. Right. And in the midst, it was a destructive pattern. And right. he thought he was coming to help his wife because she was the problem. Right. And now he does grief recovery. Right. And he travels everywhere. Right. He found his purpose, right. thinking he was going to help his wife. And now he helps people everywhere right. heal. So, so men need and men and women just want to say this. Men and women need to know. Don't think, stay in your room and trap yourself. Say, what is my purpose? Just start serving, right. mm. and exactly. God will reveal it. Yeah. Yeah. Your purpose is always right. connected to, to helping others. Yeah. Right. But I, I just want to say that's why we created Platform for Purpose. Platform mm -hmm. for Purpose is literally a platform that God has God has given us platforms within our acting, producing, right. all of these things that we're doing. Yes. And our job, our job literally is to use our platform to empower women and men, right. young children, boys and girls to find their purpose. Real quickly, because we have just a minute left, if each one of us could say something, if you're at Platform for Purpose, what's one thing that you would want to get out of it? With me, it would be the men's wake up call, you know. excuse, excuse me platform. <laughs> just thank no, you for I'm so okay. stuck. thank you men's wake up call. I love it <laughs> so expression of love yes. I expect to come and I begin I expect to learn and to grow and to take information so that I can go help my community I I hope that women and men come because it's not just for men yes. the the I the 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 importance of this this organ this empowerment panel is for women and men to come together and build together as a unity. So I hope that these women and men get empowered to literally walk in their purpose and their identity. Um, 10 seconds, go ahead. <laughs> the expectation is for men and women to come so that they can take this information back mm -hmm. that will help their family and ultimately affect their community. 
This information is for the young lady that didn't have a father, um, the woman that was abused and have this guard up and, you know, don't see men in the same light. And the goal is for them to come and get healed. We're teaching principles and not feelings because mm -hmm. principles will always submit to feelings and facts. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Principles will always submit to feelings and facts. This is what we're talking about. This is the ultimate expression of love, mm -hmm. what God has created, fathers in the home. We want to make sure you register for this wake-up call. Mm -hmm. I am Taryn Nicole Tarver, TNT, and we are watching Supernatural Lifeline Revelations. Please make sure and register for this event that's coming up on March 3rd. You want to get connected and stay connected. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us.